Now I'm going to give you a demonstration of the way things used to be mastered versus how they're mastered today using a CD that I originally purchased back in 1984, I believe. So it was done very, very early in the CD and digital world. Uh, and then I'm going to load in the remastered version of that same track on the CD from the same CD, except that it's the remastered version. And the way that you do this is I'm going to make a new Cubase project and anybody who has my other Cubase title will know about why we do things this way. And I'm going to make a new folder called Remaster Comparison. And then I'm going to hit Open. And I'm going to save this project as the exact same name. I can spell. But now I'm going to go under the File pull down menu, select Import, and select Audio CD. I need to drag this up so that we can see it a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a check mark next to CD track number 9, and I'm going to rename this one Original. Then I'm going to hit the Copy button. Now in the interest of time, I'm just going to fast forward kind of quickly here because uh, you don't want to wait around for it to finish importing. So as soon as it's finished importing, I'm going to click OK. And then... I've got the original audio file loaded into a Cubase track. Now I'm going to hit the eject button, and I'm going to eject that original CD, and I'm going to throw in the remaster. Once that CD mounts up, I can do the same thing. Select File, Import, Audio CD. And then I'm going to select the same track number 9. You'll notice that there are two more tracks on this remastered version of the CD because that's another way they get us to rebuy all of our old CDs. It's not only do they remaster them, but they put more stuff on them. So it usually is a good way to uh, get music uh, that you have never heard before from one of your favorite bands. But I'm going to rename this one Remaster. And then I'm going to hit the Copy button. And then magically, just like a cooking show, it's done. We've moved forward in time a little bit here. So I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to drag that remastered file onto its own track. And I'm going to rename that track Remaster. Now I have both versions of that song loaded onto two different Cubase tracks. But to really be able to see the differences, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select to zoom the tracks full. So now I have both tracks on an equal view. Here's the original. See how much bigger the remastered file is than the original? And remember how we talked about the fact that peak volume is not really the perceived volume of a track, it's the average volume. Well, look how much thicker that audio information is compared to the original. Now, I told you I can't play this stuff. I really wish I could, but for copyright, I can't. But what I can do is do a statistical analysis of each of those audio files. So on the original version, I'm going to go under the audio pull-down menu and select statistics. Now, these are the stats on the original file. You'll notice that the peak volume is actually still under zero. This is back when they were just transferring the analog tapes to a digital editor, and they were using a philosophy that they used for a long time with analog decks. And they didn't realize a lot of the art and science that goes behind digital remastering at this point. Again, this is very early. But the big difference here is that the average volume is almost 20 dB below zero. Now, the remastered file is going to be considerably different than that. So I'm going to put the original file over here, then I'm going to highlight the remastered track, and I'm going to do another statistical analysis of the remastered file. Now, if I put them both together, we'll be able to see what the differences are. Here's the original. You'll notice that the peak amplitude, again, was almost 3 dB below zero. The peak amplitude of the remaster approaches zero, but it's 0 0.36 or minus 0 0.36 decibels below zero. But the big difference is in the average volume. There's actually almost seven decibels of difference between the original at minus 19 dB and the remastered version at minus 12 dB. And for every 10 decibels, if you go up or down, there's double the volume or you divide the volume in half. So really, since there is a seven decibel difference between the original and the remaster, the remaster as far as how the human ear perceives it, is going to be getting pretty close to twice as loud.
And actually, I'm going to close both of those windows. And now that we know that the remaster is going to be almost twice the volume, we can actually see that that's going to be the case because it's this middle range. It's the average volume of each file that's going to tell your human ear which sounds louder. So by comparing these two identical songs and looking at the difference 20 years makes in the concept of mastering, you might assume that, well, they just make everything louder. And they do make everything louder, but there are other refinements that they do. However, this whole volume concept has turned into a war. I really hate calling things a war, but there is a volume war going on right now in the world of mastering. And I need to talk to you about what it's known as in the the popular culture, which is called the loudness war.